It's because we are in a world that teaches us that we have no control over love. You find people all the time. I fell in love. And then they fall right back out. Huh? Come on. If you can fall into it, you probably fall out of it. There's must got to be more than a feeling. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something about your feeling. You can love somebody and hate them at the same time. And we try to explain that. I love them, but I don't like them. What? What? What are we trying to do? And so our Hollywood mentality of love throws true love out the window. Because there's emotions that we all have. Emotions that we have that make us get butterflies in our stomach. Hallelujah. That could be low blood sugar. I don't know. It just, things happen. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. When that little feeling kicks in, you will be stupid. Where are you going to live? I don't know, but we're so in love. It won't matter. If you don't find somewhere to wash your socks, it's going to matter within a week. Fall asleep and you're snoring. Oh, how wonderful. Two months in, you're ready to kill somebody. You contemplate sticking socks in their mouth. The one you love. Because of a feeling. No, love has a different view from the Word of God. The reality was, I was in a Bible study one night. I wasn't dating anybody or anything. And they gave this definition of love. And it was so, oh, I love you. And I will do all this for you. And you'll never experience pain from my hands. And you'll never experience hurt from my mouth. And I will never say anything that would hurt you. And it, Man, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Instead of getting down on one knee and saying it, I wrote it down in this card and just gave her this card when I was getting engaged to her. And this beautiful definition in love, of love, was in there. And I look back at that, I thought, if I'd have been thinking at all, I couldn't have kept 90% of that stuff in there because we live in a real world. Because you can say things that are hurt when you don't mean it. You don't intend to hurt. Come on, can y'all be on? How many has ever been hurt by words and the people saying it probably didn't mean to hurt you? Okay, how many are just out and out liars? And, I mean, there's just things that happen. And, and, and it's so sad because... Man, I was just wanting to be romantic, and now I'm just a liar. Oh, come on. Like any of y'all been perfect in your marriage. How many of y'all been perfectly treated your spouse perfect for ever since you've been married? Okay, you've been married a day, is that right? A day, no, she's just playing with me. I'm telling you. So what we got to do is get past just intention. The road to hell is paved with good intention we got to get past hollywood's definition of love because if you fall in love and out of love and and, and boy boy so, oh my what a sad life you will live but love the only definition that's real is the word of god's view of love how do we know it's real because god is real you and I are born again because of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Man, that's some love right there. He paid a price for you. It says that while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us and gave his son for us. Not based on... In the King James Version throughout 1 Corinthians 13... It uses the word charity, charity. Charity is the root word for divine love. The word love in the Greek New Testament has five different root words. In our language, we just love. We just love. In Greek, they had a word that if they loved their cat, that was one word. 
If they loved their wife, that was another word. If they loved people, that's Philadelphia, love your brethren. But then there was a God kind of love. Everybody say God kind of love. There was a God kind of love that's bigger than that. When we Americans or an English-speaking people use the word love, we lump it all together. We could look at our cat and say, I love you. Then look at your spouse and say, I love you. Like, what's going on here? But in the Greek, it was not so. And so when I'm talking about love here, I'm not just talking about you loving your spouse or you loving your brother or you loving your house or car or your money. I'm talking about a love that is a biblical heavenly love that I believe is the reason we're saved, and it's awesomely connected to grace. But I will read this in this context. I think the word love was translated charity something like 25 times, but this same word was translated love in many occasions, uh, 110 occasions, I think. So verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, mark this chapter in your Bible. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men, and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I get, have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move, remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. See, we judge people's spirituality by their gifts. You've got to understand gifts are gifts. Gifts are gifts. Love comes from a deeper place than gifts. It's literally possible for somebody to be a great preacher and not love people. It's possible for tongues and interpretation to come forth and love not be there. Obviously, it's possible to move mountains by faith and still not fully grasp the power of of love because it says and it goes on to say this in verse 3 and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned and have not love it profits me nothing that is a mind-boggling statement so we got to look and understand that our priorities must be right love that lines up with biblical love takes us to where we need to be and that place I believe, is called unity. Because you can get along with people for a cause and not love them. But if you love people, you can get along and get a cause done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it says this. I'm going to just read it uh, from the King James and then read it from the NIV. It says, charity suffers long. It is kind. Charity, love envies not. Love vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly. If you're dating in this room and that person that tells you love you and they touch you, say anything to you out of the way, it ain't love. You need to run from them. Glory to God. Verse 5, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Verse 6, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Watch this in the NIV, starting in verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs okay because you if you're a human you keep a record people would say you gotta forgive and forget here's something i'll tell you you will never forget your, your brain is the greatest computer ever was what this means is you got to put it in perspective you got to forgive and put it in a place where you don't hold it against somebody anymore. You need to get rid of your list. Get rid of your list. Get rid of your list. Look, you have been done wrong by people who love you. And if you got to bring it up every few minutes, you have not forgiven. You have not forgiven. 
You're trying to fix somebody's personality sometimes when you think it's a moral issue and it's a personality difference. But if you keep a list, every time they touch that button, you got a record that can go back 20 years. You got a record that you can look and say, well, they did this and they did this and they did this. You are not walking in love. It says this, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Come on, you ain't got no room for gossip in your life. You need to protect people and protect their reputation. You don't need to spread lies. And some people say, well, it ain't gossip because it's true. Well, if it's coming from the wrong place, it, let me just help you with gossip. If sharing it is not a part of the solution of the problem, then it is gossip. It is because we're out to fix stuff, not throw wood on the fire. Glory to God. Love will last, y'all. Stand up. Love will last. Love will last. Love will last. Listen, if you're in a marriage and you're being abused, I have no problem telling you, get out of that house and get out of it today. And we'll do everything we can to help you. If somebody is, is mistreating you and it needs to be dealt with, there's scriptural ways to deal with it. People are lying on you, doing you wrong. You, there's processes in this word. You can't tell me a situation that this word don't cover. But we can't let it corrupt our love. Somebody said it's better to love and have lost than to have never loved at all. I want to say this, it's better to have loved and been hurt and keep loving than it is to guard yourself to the point where you cannot move into the realm of being loved. People 